Good day and welcome back to Horsemanship 101 again. Today we're going to talk about wild animals. Well, why have I got a horse in front of me while I'm talking about wild animals? Because horses are wild animals. And I'll explain that one to you. But uh, things that we tend to do with horses that, you know, one thing I'm working on, this guy's teaching him to side up to the mountain block for me here. Not that anybody ever uses one with him, but might someday, who knows. And uh, in the meantime, we got him trained for it. Just one more thing to do, and he's a pretty smart, good-natured guy. He's pretty easy to work with, and uh, so that's what we've been doing. But wild animals. See, good horsemanship is largely understanding the horse and the nature of the horse. And where a lot of people run into trouble is they think they're dealing with an animal that it's not what you think it is because these things every one of them are wild animals now a lot of people go no 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 they've been bred and raised uh, you know for you know many many generations thousands of years domestically they're not wild animals oh well, yes they are because no matter how many generations they've been raised and you know bred selectively for a certain coat colors, physical features, whatever else. The core DNA has never ever changed in these animals. They are still wild animals. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about wild horses too. Uh, there are actually very, very few truly wild horses in the world. Uh, I believe the only truly wild horses are in Mongolia. Uh, all the ones that are in North America, in the U.S., anyhow, they've actually done DNA testing on them, and they all trace back to Arabian bloodlines, which is consistent with uh, the early Spanish settlers and the horses they brought over. So that's likely that that's where most of them came from, because there uh, is stories historically that uh, they have uh, been times in history where large numbers of domestically kept horses have been released into the wild, and, of course, over the years, many domestically kept horses have gotten loose and contributed to those numbers. Now, they have bred and reproduced and survived quite nicely in the wild, and you kind of got to ask, why is that if they're actually domestic horses? You know, descendants of Arabians, mostly. Well, that's because they're simply returning to their natural element. They are already wild animals, so, you know, survival in the wild is not a hard thing for them to do. Uh, another example is uh, in Western Canada, there's a, a bunch of wild horses. Well, actually, aren't too many left anymore, but uh, a lot of them, you can visually tell that they have draft breeding in them. And that is quite consistent with history, too, because prior to the machine age, uh, a lot of the loggers out in Western Canada were using draft horses for pulling out logs out of the bush and that sort of thing. And when the machine age came along and they started using machines, they just let them go. So a lot of them are descendants of draft horses. And that's rather consistent there as well. Um, you know, it's like, uh, take a lion, raise it domestically. Ten generations, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you can breed it, raise it domestically. And 10 generations later, it is still a lion that has the potential to kill you and eat you. You know, wild animals. I don't even think there is truly a domestic animal. Uh, give you a couple other examples. Cats and dogs even, you know, everybody thinks of them as domestic animals. But, you know, due to breeding, uh, selective breeding, you know, a lot of them probably wouldn't survive too well in the wild uh, because of their physical traits. But they still have all their core survival, hunter survival instincts in them. That's why people keep barn cats. They still have the instinct to hunt rodents. So they take care of your mice for you. That's their natural wild instinct. They haven't changed. Uh, dogs, you can hear many stories about dogs in communities where they are rather laxed about keeping their dogs contained. They end up with a lot of strays running around. Those strays tend to eventually pack up and start hunting together. And that's all natural instinct. And it actually can become a rather dangerous situation too when that happens, and even to large humans. Uh, small humans in particular are quite vulnerable. Uh, even adults, you get a pack of dogs, you got a problem. So uh, I'm not convinced there is any such thing as a domestic animal in the first place, uh, much less horses. And that's one of the things that, you know, uh, we consider that we shouldn't have problems with them that are basically nothing more than their 
natural survival instincts. Now, whether it's uh, rearing, bucking, bolting, biting, kicking, whatever, those are all natural survival instincts that are perfectly natural to a horse. They're perfectly natural to a wild animal. And that's what people have to understand is what you're dealing with here. You're dealing with a wild animal. So when it does things that are undesirable or what humans would classify as bad, it's nothing other than what the horse naturally does. It's just the nature of the horse. It's what a horse does. So um, understand you are dealing with a wild animal and you'll have a lot less trouble dealing with these animals because, you know, like I said, good horsemanship is understanding your animal understanding horses in general, the nature of the horse, and the fact that these are wild animals. Now, why they're so particularly tolerant of humans, I have no idea. I don't think I'll ever have an answer for that one, because, well, man, I don't think they should be as tolerant as they are of humans, but they are. They're marvelous animals. They're probably one of God's greatest creations, but, uh, you know, they've existed since the beginning of time because of their instincts, and, you know, their survival skills are second to none. Uh, they do very well in the wild if you let them loose. And uh, the same is true of, you know, like I said, even domestic dogs, uh, you turn them loose in the wild and they will revert to wild animals in a hurry. So, uh, you know, don't be surprised about certain behaviors. A lot of people got this in their mind that they're a domestic animal because they've been raised domestically and bred domestically for so many years. But the core DNA has never, ever changed. And uh, the ones that are considered to be wild in the U.S. have actually done DNA testing on them, uh, on the wild ones, and they all trace back to domestic horses. But the domestic horses never really were domestic, in my opinion. I'm pretty sure they were always truly a wild animal, just like this one is right here. They all are. So, you're dealing with a wild animal. Don't forget it. Have a good day.